Hello everyone, in this video we're going to think about four new Napoleonic military generals that have appeared on AliExpress, think about the history of these figures and what they represent, and we'll think about where you can buy them. You'll be able to find this information in the pinned comment below. The introduction video today was based on my Battle of Talavera stop motion, which I released recently. You can find that on the channel. So, hot on the heels of the latest Ulan release, we now have some famous faces from the Napoleonic Wars represented in Lego compatible minifigures. In a step away from the troops that we've seen so far, we'll now see individual leaders take to the field. In this article, we'll find out who they are, and you will find some affiliate links in the pinned comment below that will tell you where to buy them. 44 figures have passed so far in this series, but these are the first of such an esteemed rank, and the first to wear the bicorn hat. As opposed to how you would expect a commander on campaign to dress, these models certainly are wearing the most formal version of their attire. And we'll see in this article that how the uniforms are very much based on the portraits that were taken of them at the time. Joachim Murat was a French military officer who rose to prominence during the Revolutionary and Napoleonic Wars. During the French Revolution, Murat demonstrated his military prowess and loyalty to Napoleon Bonaparte. Murat served under Napoleon in numerous campaigns, including those in Italy and in Egypt. He became one of Napoleon's most trusted generals and played a significant part in key battles. Murat's career reached its peak when he was appointed Marshal of the Empire in 1804 and became King of Naples and Sicily in 1808. However, Murat's loyalty to Napoleon eventually led to his downfall. Following Napoleon's defeat at the Battle of Leipzig in 1813, Murat switched sides in an attempt to secure his throne. His decision proved disastrous, and he was ultimately captured and executed by firing squad in 1815 after he failed his attempt to regain power in Italy during the Hundred Days. Murat can be seen here in a fine uniform with plenty of embroidery and a red sash. It appears to be based on a portrait of Murat depicting him as the King of Naples, but trades the fancy hat here for an elaborate bicorn hat. The minifigure also shares a lot of similarity with this portrait of him, which depicts Murat in 1805. He's listed here as wearing the uniform of the Admiral of the Empire, which Napoleon gave him the position in 1805, despite him having very little knowledge of naval warfare. He was, however, a fine cavalry commander. I think this minifigure will be a popular release, especially for those forming their own French army and wanting a spectacularly uniformed officer to lead it. You can pick him up and other commanders from AliExpress following the link in the comment below. Mikhail Kutuzov was a prominent military commander and statesman, best known for his military leadership during the Napoleonic Wars, particularly during the French invasion of Russia in 1812. Kutuzov served as the commander-in-chief of the Russian army during that critical period. Before his role in the Napoleonic Wars, Kutuzov had a long and distinguished military career, serving in various campaigns against the Ottoman Empire and Poland. In 1774, during the First Russian-Turkish War, he was ordered to storm the well-defended town of Alushta. When his troops were on the verge of stopping the assault, he grabbed the fallen regimental standard and led the attack. While charging forward as an inspiration to his men, he was shot in the head and it was expected to be a fatal shot. The bullet went right through his head and exited near his right eye. Amazingly, he did recover after a couple of years out of the army, returned to active service. But he had a permanently twisted right eye, which we can see represented on the minifigure here. 
During the French invasion of Russia in 1812, he adopted the famous strategy of avoiding direct confrontation with Napoleon's forces, instead employing that strategy of retreat, scorched earth and attrition. This strategy culminated in the Battle of Borondino in September 1812, where he commanded the Russian forces against the Grand Armée. While the battle was bloody and inconclusive, it ultimately forced Napoleon to advance deeper into Russia, where he faced logistical challenges and the harsh Russian winter. He is shown in green uniform, which looks like a colour match to the rest of the Russian line that we've had so far. He's got his various medals on display. Portraits of Kutuzov do seem pretty consistent in this uniform, which is matched very well by this minifigure here. Oh, he's also missing that right eye quite appropriately. Next we have Sir Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington. He entered the British Army in 1787 and served in various different campaigns, gaining experience and recognition for his leadership abilities in Flanders, India and Denmark. Wellesley's most famous victories came during the Peninsular War between 1808 and 1814, where he commanded British forces against the French in the Iberian Peninsula. Here he led the British, along with the Portuguese and Spanish allies, to victories such as that at Talavera, which I created myself in a recent stop motion, and most notably at the Battle of Vitoria in 1813, which resulted in the French withdrawal from Spain. In 1814, he entered France with his army and fought the Battle of Toulouse, after which came news that Napoleon had actually abdicated four days earlier. A year later, in 1815, he was back in action during the Hundred Days, and Wellesley's most celebrated triumph came at the Battle of Waterloo, where he led Allied forces to victory over Napoleon, effectively ending the Napoleonic Wars. That victory solidified his reputation as one of Britain's greatest military leaders. As with all these figures so far, he's dressed very much in full formal attire, as opposed to field dress. And this is particularly noticeable with Sir Arthur, who is famed for his rather plain blue outfit that he wore on campaign from 1808. The uniform on this figure is splendid, and it's certainly great if you want to make a scene of him sitting for the portrait, or him attending the Duchess of Richmond's ball before Waterloo. It's a nice bicorn hat that he wears. I personally will probably use the head from the French officer model, which features impressive sideburns, as I did in my Battle of Talavera stop motion. Give me night. Or give me Blucher. Finally, we have Goebel Liberecht von Blücher. Do forgive my pronunciation, but he was a Prussian field marshal who played a significant role in the eventual defeat of Napoleon. He was known to his men as Marshal Forwards, or Marshal Forwards. Blücher was a fascinating character. He originally fought as a hussar with Sweden against Prussia, before being captured in 1760 and subsequently commissioned into the Prussian army. In 1773, he was then forced to resign by Frederick the Great on grounds of insubordination, and then became a farmer until the death of Frederick in 1786, when he returned to the army and was promoted to colonel and fought in key battles against Napoleon, including the Battle of Leipzig. By the time of Ligny and Waterloo, he was 74 years old, but continued to pursue Napoleon with a fanatical enthusiasm. At Ligny, the Prussians were defeated, and the elderly field marshal was trapped under his dead horse for several hours, saved as a result of his aide-de-camp throwing a greatcoat over him to conceal his identity, and he was ridden over by several French horses before he eventually escaped. Battered and wounded, he rejoined his army and marched to the aid of Wellington at the Battle of Waterloo, just as the battle hung in the balance and dealt a decisive blow before his Prussian force continued their pursuit of the routed French. He was prone to bouts of mental illness, including one particularly famous episode 
believing himself to be pregnant with an elephant fathered by a French infantryman. It's been argued that this quote was actually misinterpreted in its translation to the mutual French language by Wellington as a Prussian phrase essentially for those French infantry gave me a headache. Reportedly, it was a favourite anecdote of the Duke of Wellington whenever he spoke of this ally who ultimately was instrumental in the defeat of Napoleon by the Prussian arrival at Waterloo. This is probably my favourite model of the four releases, and I think it shows Blucher's character and moustache particularly well. Some additional sideburns would have been a nice touch, though. So overall, I'm really pleased that these models are here. I think it ushers in a really nice age of some actual characters from the Napoleonic Wars appearing as part of this series. It would be nice if we could get them wearing field uniform as well as this ceremonial dress, but I think if you're showing your army on parade, then full dress will be perfectly acceptable in that case. So that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you've learned something from the video in terms of the history of these units. It's been a bit of a long one, but hopefully it's something that you've been able to take something away from that will help you with building your army in a historically accurate way. Do let me know in the comments what you think of these figures and remember if you buy them through the affiliate links that I've listed below you will be supporting the work of this channel. I also have a blog napoleonic-bricks.com where you can read all this information and see other articles that I've written about the Napoleonic Wars represented in Lego and Lego compatible models. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.